Hey guys, Joshua from Vietnam coming at you with a design for an experiment that I would like to do to verify the surface of the earth. So we're going to start with my scientific method review where we look at all five steps of the scientific method and see exactly what we're doing. So we know that compasses work or to define that a little more scientifically, we know that magnetized rods and needles are going to orient themselves in a specific direction in much of the known world. We know that in Antarctica that they don't work, and we do know that there's a difference between true north and magnetic north, but we'll talk about that later on. So the question is the thing that this channel is all about. What is the functional surface shape of our known geography relative towards that point that needles are orienting themselves to? I'm saying our known geography because really that's all we got, guys. So my hypothesis is that our known world stretches out in a mostly a flat plane around this geographic and magnetic point. I think that our observable world does appear to be flat. So here's the design of my experiment. I want two observers. I'm going to need someone else to help me in this experiment. And we're going to start at a known distance apart and traverse in what we determine to be truly south. We're going to do this for about 100 kilometers. We need to do this in the southern hemisphere. and the prediction that I'm making, my novel verifiable prediction, is that the observers should find the distance between them increasing as they traverse truly south. So we know that the concept most flat earthers have is that our earth stretches out much like the azimuthal equidistance projection. So you see here the, how this specific map was generated on the right hand side. It started with a globe, the map that we all accept and we've known since school, and then they basically flattened this out. This is really good because when we use this kind of map, since it's all circular, it's very easy for us to predict what distances should be in the southern hemisphere because it's all mathematical ideals. So this is Gleason's map. This is what most flat earthers are uh, going to tout as their most accurate map. It certainly has some problems, but uh, every map does. And the bigger the map is, the more problems it has. And if you know anything about cartography, you're not even going to try to d dispute that. So we need to go beyond the equator. And anywhere we are beyond the equator, we'll find that if we are traversing truly south, two people should get farther and farther and farther apart. To show you this in a very extreme example, if you look at the globe, here we are following around these lines, and we get closer and closer to the southern pole, and the two arrowheads are much closer than the base of the arrows. On the Gleason's map, we have something completely opposite. So here's our problems and considerations in this test. We need to figure out first where we're going to do the test. How are we going to measure the distance between the parties? That's something that I haven't perfectly answered yet. How do we determine what true south is? And there is the entire validity of the experiment. If we can't determine true south, then our measurements are irrelevant if we don't know the direction we're going. So how far will we need to traverse to be conclusive? That should be pretty easy to solve, just some simple math. And then I'm not going to go into this at the end, but the reality is, is I can't leave Vietnam right now because of the, uh, the virus. And there's no way that I can go anywhere south of the equator because Vietnam doesn't own land south of the equator. Where, the first question, I would like to do this in the Karoo Desert in South Africa. The primary reason I would like to do it in the Karoo Desert, one is that it's so flat the South Africans say when your dog runs away, you can see him for two weeks but also because this desert is particularly famous for its low pol light pollution, and I can record many observations to answer a lot of questions I have about southern char star trails. So I would like to do this here, and uh, the main reasons are that the farther south you go, the more extreme the distances should be, so it's going to be more valid of an experiment, and going to Antarctica isn't feasible, so going to South Africa or Chile seems to be a primary destination. But I also feel that Standard distances, the distances that map makers currently give us and is measured like on Google Maps and Google Earth, I believe that over land, they're more likely accurate than over water. So if I look at doing the tests in Australia, how far Australia is from the equator encompasses a good bit of water, but it doesn't with Africa. So I would assume that where there's trucks and where there's trains and where there's roads where people can empirically observe consistently, the land measurements are going to be more, uh, more accurate. And like I said before, the star trails. I have other motiv motivations for going to the Karoo Desert.
So the biggest question that I don't quite have an answer for, I'm still doing some research, are, is how do we measure the starting and ending distances between two parties? Obviously, GPS for measurement is not valid. Maybe GPS can help us find true south, but we're not going to be using it for our measurement. I've used LIDAR and radar systems that work in the hundreds of meters, but never the hundreds of kilometers. So if this test is going to go the way that I've currently have it designed, we need to get within a 10 meter margin of error at a distance of 100 to 150 kilometers. And I think in theory, radar and LIDAR systems should be able to do this. I just haven't been able to find one yet. So hopefully other engineers who might be interested in my channel could, could talk to me about how to do this. There's also counting revolutions on a vehicle or a distance wheel to give accuracy at those distances. It's only 100 kilometers. That could be done in a day rather easily. So we'll probably be using dirt bikes for this test. So if we can make sure the trip meter on the dirt bikes is, in, uh, is accurate, maybe we could use that. Or maybe we could even build a trailer with a distance wheel to more meticulously at a slower speed measure these. Um, and if there are LIDAR and radar systems that work at these ranges, can they be built by myself with equipment that's readily available? I'd much rather build my equipment than buy it. Um, or maybe there's totally a different technology I'm overlooking. So if anyone has anything, uh, anything to add here about how I could verify within 10 meters of accuracy, 100 kilometers distance, please drop it in the comments. So the next question we would have to verify is what is true south? Can we trust RTK GPS to give us an accurate version of South? My gut feeling is no. Can we trust the true and magnetic divergence that's publicly available by the U.S. government? So we know that true north and magnetic north aren't the same thing. And in South Africa, the variance is actually quite extreme. But can we trust that it's consistent enough for us to get our trajectory? And... Maybe celestial navigation might be the truest way. If we're, if we're throwing out a lot about our assumptions and we're trying to, to, be as, to be as accurate as possible and based on as few assumptions as possible, maybe throwing out everything but what we once knew to be north and south from the celestial sphere above us, maybe we just go back to that. So I also, when I get to South Africa, the very first test that I'd like to do, like within the first afternoon that I land, is test these three souths. Okay, I guess I would need night to test Celestial South, but within the first day that I land, I would like to test these three Souths and see their variance. So as I mentioned, the Magnetic North and True North, you guys probably all know this, you remember it from grade school, it's different in different parts of the world. So in South Africa, in the Karoo Desert, where I want to test, it actually goes west 25.7 degrees. That's more extreme than I've ever seen it in my life. Like, if you look at Ho Chi Minh, where I live, it's 0 0.65 west. Compasses work insanely well here. And in Australia, it's going east the other direction. So I was kind of curious just how these looked in the Gleason's map and what they were pointing to. Interestingly enough, they do point to where we're told Magnetic North is. But then I also threw them on the globe and wanted to look at that, too. Oh, it looks like my compass over South Africa fell off a bit. But you get the point. The orientation is correct. And then I drew it on a, our standard projection of the flat map to take a look at it there and see where it's pointing. And we're normally told it's above Canada, the true magnetic pole around here. It's actually moving now quite faster than it ever has in history. I'm not sure why that is, and I don't think anyone else is either. Here's just our locale. I'm just looking at Asia and Africa. And there's me drawing the lines on the Gleason's map. And it, it was... It wasn't super accurate. I just spent a few minutes on this. I, I didn't line everything up perfectly at all. This was very unscientific. It was more to appease my own curiosity. But it did get very close to where they say Magnetic North is. Makes me wonder how they determined that. So I'm most interested in the results of the Magnetic South adjusted for the true value. Um, but I think we need to try them all. I think that... I think that the observations of the magnetic North Pole must be tied to something geographically, even if it is moving. And I don't know why it's moving. Like I said, that's something that I really don't have, have an answer for. So how far do we need to go for the test to be conclusive? What's my prediction? This is what makes my science science, right? So here's some of the assumptions when I did my, my calculations and my math that the equator is an ideal path that the sun takes on the two equinoxes each year. We know that the sun doesn't really take that path because it's always moving inward or outward. But 
that is what we defined a perfect circle as the equator. And the radius of this path is 6,378,000 meters. The distance sourced by Google Maps of the equator to the Karoo Desert, which I spelled wrong again, is functionally accurate. Because if I don't use that, I'm going to have to start in mid-Africa and traverse south measuring distance all the way. And the test got a lot bigger and a lot more expensive. So the surface of the Earth is functionally flat. Obviously, I'm making a prediction to prove my hypothesis correct. So I need to start with the assumption of my hypothesis. Here is the distance to the Karoo Desert all the way up to the equator as defined by Google Maps, not Google Earth. Please know they do have some differences. And that's 3,748,000 meters, right? So we add those together. And then that circle uh, should have a radius of 10,126,000. So how I do the math is pretty consistent with how I always do it. I believe that geometry should be the study of numbers in space, not in abstract. But I don't have equipment to build this. So I use AutoCAD to cheat. So. Over to AutoCAD Autodesk 2018, and we're going to plot this out so we can figure things out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make a perfect circle that represents, represents our equator. It's asking me where the center point of this circle will be, and I'm going to put it at 10, 1, 2, 6, 0, 0, 0. That is the full radius of our circle for all the way down to South Africa. So I'm going to make the center points the same, but I want my workable range to all be in positives. It'll be more clear once I build it. Give me one second. And then what's the radius of that circle? So the radius of that circle is going to be the radius of the equator, which is 6,378,000. There we go. And now we should be able to zoom out and find the path of our sun. So that's the path our sun takes. And just because the way that I've already planned this out, where South Africa is, is exactly right here on that red line, that X value. So we're going to make that circle now, too. Our center point is going to be exactly the same. And our radius now is going to be that full radius all the way down to South Africa. Boom. Perfect. So now, I want the two observers to end with a distance of 100 kilometers. And then we'll figure out where to start based on the math. So I'm just going to draw a line here that's my perfect straight, but obviously it's way too big because how, uh, how zoomed out we are. And then I'm just going to modify the properties. So my X start is going to be, let's see, my X start is going to be 50 kilometers less than the radius of the circle. And I'm going to make my Y negative 100 kilometers. There's no Z because this is only a two-dimensional object. And then this is going to be 50 kilometers more where it ends. That gives us a length of 100 kilometers. And the ending point for y will be the same because we want it to be a perfectly straight line. There it is. So that is the distance of our line at the end. So how do we get our measurement of where we should start and how much the variance is? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make perfect lines between each end of this line into the center of these circles, right into the radius. So in AutoCAD, you can select the things that are lockable and clickable, and you can see a perfect circles. I do have that center enabled. So I'm going to make a new line. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to grab one end, and it's going to keep it nice and perfect. And then I'm going to grab that. I'm going to make two lines because I don't want them to connect it into a polygon. Exact same thing. There we go. We have our line, and we have the distance here should be the starting point, and we have the distance here should be the end. We already know this one's a perfect 100, so we're going to grab our ruler tool here, and we're just going to whip out some measurements so that they're all on the recording. Oop. Not the center point. Let me 
trim these up actually. There we go. So you can see these now end at the perfect ideal location because I've trimmed them off and now we have these direct values that we can measure. See that is 99 kilometers and 20 meters. And down here, we've got that perfect 100, right? And so what I did was I made it so that this center point here was 100 kilometers perfectly here. But we know that this is a circle. It's a much bigger circle than the supposed cur curvature of the Earth. So it's less curved there. But that's why we'll see a slight variance on the distance of these. If I measure this, it's not actually 100 kilometers. They need to go a bit farther. It's 100 kilometers and 100 meters on that side. And it should be very similar here, 123 meters. Exactly right. So the idea would be we start at 99 kilometers apart. We traverse truly south for approximately 100 kilometers and 100 meters. And then we see if our distance apart has increased by 100 meters. Here's all those same measurements we just pulled up just from a previous time that I did it. And I see that our increase of around 100 and 123 meters south should be around one kilometer. I believe that should be verifiable. I believe that should be reproducible. And I've already predicted it. So the purpose of my channel is to get these designs of experiments I want to run out there for more than just one reason, primarily to set a goal for myself. If I have these videos, I have a commitment for me to go back and look on and go, that experiment's something I want to do when I have the money and the time and the ability to travel to do it. So it's setting real tangible goals for myself on this journey. I also want to publish my experiment ideas for others. There might be someone in Australia or in South Africa who's not thought of this test, and they're like, wait, I can do that relatively quickly, relatively cheaply. So I want to make sure that everyone has access to everything that I'm trying to design and figure out, and maybe they can critique me. Maybe they can tell me a thing that I've made a mistake on. One of my assumptions should be adjusted, perhaps. Maybe there are people interested in assisting me. I can't do that experiment alone. It would <clears throat> quadruple the time and double the money to be able to do that alone and all of my results will become less verifiable so I definitely need some help uh, and then here this is a rather cheap experiment for two people to go to South Africa from Saigon would cost about eight thousand two hundred dollars that's with motorbikes that's with food that's with a place to stay and that's even assuming I have to spend a few thousand dollars on whatever LIDAR system I'm gonna end up using So thank you guys for all, all for watching. If you want to jump on and have a chat about this experiment, about how maybe you could assist me or maybe you could revise me, please send me an email at sincerejeodicy at gmail.com. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.